So the ATS proposed rule to redefine frames and receivers, as well as regulate 3D printed firearms, is now open for comments. And also we are getting news that pistol braces may soon be under attack as well. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that the ATF needs to be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also wanna give a shout out to one of the main supporters of the channel, that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you look into USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So like I said in the intro, the comment period for the proposed rule by the ATF to regulate firearms, frames, and receivers, redefine them, as well as regulate 3D printed firearms and all kinds of other things is now open for comedy. A lot of you guys have been asking me over the last few weeks since I put out my last video, breaking down comprehensively this proposed rule, when you could jump on and actually enter comments. And until now, it was pretty much just not open. It was taking a while to actually hit the register and be published, and now today it is open. So you can now drop comments on that and let the ATF know and let the federal government know you do not agree with what they're doing. Now, of course, I'm gonna put everything I'm talking about in this video down in the description box, and that will include a link to where you can go to the uh, ATF proposed rule and drop your comment on it. But first, real quick, for those individuals who have no idea what we're talking about about this proposed ATF rule, I kinda of wanna just go real quick through what this is so that they can understand why we need to oppose this and so they also have an understanding of how they need to frame their comment when they actually go onto that and leave their comment. So first and foremost, what is this proposed rule? Well, the document proposed rule is 2021R-05. And this, essentially what it seeks to do is broaden the definition of what a firearm is as considered under the Gun Control Act and therefore regulate more things as a firearm. That is kind of the overarching goal of this whole proposed rule. Now, how does it do that? First, you have to look at the GCA, the Gun Control Act, and what it defines to be a firearm as of right now. The definition of what a firearm is right now can be found in 18 U.S. Code, Section 921A, Subsection 3. And what this says is the term firearm means A, any weapon, including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. So that readily language is going to be important. We'll talk about that. B, the frame or receiver of any such weapon. Again, going to be important. C, any firearm muffler or firearm silencer or D, any destructive device. And then it says antique firearms are not included in this definition. So that is what they define to be a firearm, something that expels a projectile by the explosion, a frame or receiver, a muffler or silencer, or anything that can be readily converted to expel a projectile by an explosion. So first, what this proposed rule does is it changes the definition of readily, and it does that by doing this. It adds in language that says that for the purpose of the new definition of readily, it shall be a process that is fairly or reasonably efficient, quick and easy, but not necessarily the most efficient, speedy, or easy process. So very vague, it's saying it's fast, but not the fastest process. And then in this proposed rule, they're also gonna add in some factors to make this determination. So again, trying to broaden that basic definition of what a firearm is right now and make more things to be considered readily convertible to expel a projectile by an explosion. Then they go to the subsection B portion that talks about frames or receivers. They're gonna to try to expand that as well in this proposed rule. And how do they do that? Well, under this proposed rule, a frame or receiver is any externally visible housing or holding structure for one or more fire control components. So if it's externally visible and it holds some sort of fire control component, it is going to be considered a frame or receiver and therefore also considered to be a firearm. So what is a fire control component? Well, they tell us that as well in this proposed rule. It is going to be anything like a hammer, bolt, bolt carrier, breech block, cylinder, trigger mechanism, firing pin, striker, or slide rail. So if something that is externally visible can house any of those things going forward, it could be considered to be a frame or receiver. But again, also in the proposed rule, they kind of have some vague language where the director, which could be David Chipman, can decide what those actually are. Now, another thing they do in this proposed rule, which is huge, is they add a definition of privately manufactured firearms. And what the proposed rule does is it requires serialization for 80% firearms as well as 3D printed items as well. So if FFLs ever come in contact with these items, they will have to serialize them. As well, if you were to want to go purchase, maybe say an 80% lower from a gun store or any shop, you're going to have to go through the traditional processes that you would have to if you were purchasing any other firearm. So that is the quick rundown of this, the overarching main points of what this proposed bill does. Now, how do you go about actually putting your comment 
on this. Again, like I said, I will put a link down in the description section where you can go and actually leave your comment on this proposed rule. One thing I wanna note real quick is that when this first dropped earlier today, there were some issues with some links where the ATF, I guess, went in and actually changed the link to this proposed rule. So initially it was open with one link, then that was kind of shut down and then people couldn't get to it and they came out with a new link. So if anything like that happens again, I will definitely let you guys know. I will update the detail section and let you guys know that there is a new link. Now, when it comes to leaving comments on proposed rules like this, there are some guidelines that you have to meet for your comment to actually be accepted and to be considered. The first thing is that you have to have the document number of the proposed rule that you are actually commenting on. And for this one, it is gonna be 2021R-05. So that has to be in your comment as well. One of the additional nuances to this is that you can either directly leave a comment on that link that I'm gonna have here. There's gonna be a little like description box where you can just type in your comment, or you can just do a word form format it yourself, kind of just uh, tinker with it yourself, figure out exactly how you want it, and then upload that file to the website. So you can do either or. Beyond just having the document number in your comment, you also need to leave your full name as well as your address. So those are again, requirements that must be met for your comment to be considered. Another major thing is that you cannot include any curse words in the comment that you leave. If you leave curse words, it's just gonna automatically be kicked. So I know we all are super frustrated by this. We don't agree with what the ATF is trying to do and what the current administration is trying to do. But if you leave curse words in there, it's just gonna give them an excuse to kick it and they are not gonna have to consider your comment. Your comment's not gonna be counted. So just remember, no curse words. Just try to keep it as formal as you can and voice your opinion with them why you oppose this. Another thing to consider is there will be templates probably circulating around. Uh, don't copy and paste them wholesale because duplicates will not be considered individually. So try to just personalize your comment as much as you can to yourself. Now, another thing I wanna mention real quick is that it appears again that the administration will be moving on stabilizing braces or pistol braces. Um, we got some information and there's a website I'm gonna link down in the detail section showing that there is a proposed rule um, that is going to be coming up likely as well on these items. So definitely keep an eye out for that. I will update you guys when all that hits, but right now they're moving on 80% lowers and it looks like going forward, they're also gonna try to move on braces as well. So I highly recommend you guys go out right now and drop a comment on this proposed rule and let the ATF know you oppose this. Also share my video and other videos as well that talk about this issue. We wanna make as much noise as we can right now and just get as many people as we can commenting on this proposed rule. The comment period for this will be open 90 days, but we definitely don't wanna wait the full 90 days to get our comments in. We want the ATF and the federal government to know that Americans oppose what they're trying to do. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, also spread the word about 2A infringements like this that are going on in the US. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and states will be maintained by armed scholars.